Hey everyone, it's Jessica, Pretty Prints and Paper, and today I wanted to give you my review of the Silk and Sonder Planner Notebooks. As uh, someone who has done a lot of mix of planning and bullet journaling, I wanted to give you my thoughts on this. Folks did send me this to review, but these thoughts are going to be honest and they're going to be my own. So let's dive in. This is a planner subscription service so that you get one month at a time. You can subscribe for a month, you can subscribe for three months, however suits you. And of course, the longer that you subscribe for, the cheaper each notebook is. I think this is like 20, like low 20s per month but you can always double check on their website in case it has changed. And each month there's a different theme, there's a different uh, topic that they focus on, and of course different designs. This notebook is um, eight and a half this way and seven inches this way. So just a little bit smaller than your classic like Happy Planner seven by nine. And it is one month at a time, so it is super thin. And there's a coil binding. It is got you know a cardstock cover but it's pretty soft so you could put this into a cover or something like that and it is made in California so it's got these beautiful floral designs you can check out all the past covers but I, I find the designs to be really really beautiful and elegant it doesn't usually have a modern theme so that might not be up your alley but again these thoughts are going to be honest they are going to be my own and you can kind of decide on your own whether you would actually use this or not okay uh, inside there is an index that goes through some of the trackers that they have. A lot of them stay similar across all the months, but there are some that they swap out depending on the season. Um, there's some instructions as to how they recommend that you use some of these pages so that no matter when you start, there's a little bit of a instruction guide. As per usual, you start big and go small. So starting with that annual overview and then the monthly overview they have a future log, so just in case you're wondering, like, oh, where would I put all the other stuff for the months ahead? You could technically put them in here if you want to use little transparent dots. Um, you can also, you know, keep track of future appointments. You can keep track of future birthdays or project deadlines, whatever is relevant for you. And what I like about the Silk and Sonder in general is that they like to look at reflection. I'm one of those people who always has some kind of reflection component in the planners that I use, like the Moxie Life or the Passion Planner. So I do like that they have some of those in here. And then you can kind of set your monthly intentions for November. This does remind me of the Moxie Life weekly goal. So you can decide, you know, how you want to make sure that this month is a little bit more intentional than the last in some key areas. They do the mood tracker for you, the habit tracker for you. That's kind of the downside of some of the bullet journal stuff is when you feel like you have to draw it out. So they do a good job of shaking the form of some of these every month and they look different depending on what month it is. So I do like that they shake that up in case you didn't want to be stuck using the same theme every time. You can color in or use patterns or stickers inside here to kind of indicate certain moods and you can decide that on your own. So they've created the structure and then you fill in your own designs. And then same thing here. I've seen people do patterns, I've seen people do colors or stickers, but then you just kind of fill it in around the circle. Sleep tracker, I know this is relevant for me. I always have a hard time sleeping, so this is kind of a nice option of being able to track that. Happiness log, I think they're taking some of the greatest hits of trackers and bullet journal lists and putting them into a kind of a nice pre-formatted layout. But of course, this might not apply to you, so you wouldn't necessarily use all of them. Um, this one I think is my favorite because I love music and every season I listen to a particular set of songs. So this is really cool. You can write in the kind of music that you're listening to or maybe even podcasts, of course, you can add that in there. I think you can use playlists pretty liberally and like use YouTube videos, movies, Netflix. And then there's a happiness jar. You could always print out little photos that you can put into here throughout the month so that you can kind of create a memory, you know, getting into more of the happy moments. And what I think is pretty cool is that they tell you to choose one and tell the whole entire story. They have a coloring page. Of course, they have a grounding quote. I do love the, the pattern here. So if you find that some of these lists or trackers you may not use, 
I've seen people carefully go in with the tiny scissors and cut the lines into the back of those punches so that you can kind of take them out like they're in a disc bound. You can remove them and then like move them around the notebook or you can remove them entirely. Of course, that's up to you. Whatever works best. They're putting all these lists in the front instead of in the back, which is interesting. So you could, you know, go in, cut these out and intersperse them throughout the planning pieces. Something unique about the Silk and Sonder is that they do send out a couple recipes each month in each planner. So this could be something that's really interesting to you because it's something you never would have thought of. Ramen is my jam. Of course, some notes pages for your own lists. A monthly expense tracker. So it's simple, but it does provide the structure for you. Each week, it looks like this. So this one has a Monday start. And it helps you set that kind of weekly intention, trying to look at what are the things you need to do this week, your goals, your to-dos, your habits. This is quite large, <laughs> this right here. Uh, and then the meal plan, some setting intentions around wellness. So you could use this for, you know, some of your self-care activities like movement or meditation, me time, arts and crafts, and then a spot for some highlights. And then you have the week. I love vertical, so that's really copacetic for me, but they input some of the things that are pretty common in vertical layout. So the one thing, this can be of course work, this could be something that you're focused on that day, your intention, and then they have a bar for the weather. And then they just have a really blank open grid so that you can kind of divide it as you want. Similar to like the PP Weeks or the Hobonichi, you can divide it up. These are two inches across. So a little bit different than what you normally would use the 1.5 inch stickers for, which could be great because you want to keep it simple or minimal. And then at the bottom, there's the hydration tracker. I personally need a whole entire rows and pages for each of the weekend days so that might not appeal to you but if you are down to combine those two together that might work and then you can take your notes for the week make lists and then it kind of goes through again with each week doing the major goals the to-dos the meal plan and then interspersed in the middle of the month one of my favorites is just what are you currently okay and then it ends, ends with the planning pages. So what I did was I used some of my most commonly used pens in here to see if it would bleed on the other side because paper quality matters to me since I do use some lettering pens and stuff like that. I use my favorite 0.28 millimeter pen, which is I'm all about lately, a tool 0.5 millimeter pen, Crayola Super Tips highlighting that, and then my Tombow Fudenosuke. And on the back, it doesn't really ghost at all. So you can see a little bit of it, but actually not very bad. Once you write over it, you would never even notice. So from a paper quality standpoint, it is thin, a little bit off-white, and doesn't really show that badly. That's the end. Okay. So obviously there are some things to consider if you were going to be signing up for the subscription. It is a cute theme. You don't have to really think too much about putting all those structures together. There's some flexibility and openness within each layout, but obviously the theme and the colors and stuff are decided for you. And if you find yourself wanting to kind of dabble in some of these trackers and lists with, without actually drawing them out or thinking up which lists you want to include, this is a great start. You can always, you know, cut, move the lists around if they don't appeal to you or you want to put them somewhere else. So that's kind of the risk that you take is that you don't really get to preview each month what lists are going to be included. You might see one in November that you really love and that may not be in the December one. They keep some things consistent, but again, some of those one-offs, like the playlist, will probably be changed next month. That is one downside that you don't always know what the structure is every month. I do believe that every month our needs change, but maybe in a way that we choose. And then the the binding, if you're into coil binding, I'm a book bound person myself for, for most of my notebooks and then disc bound. So this may or may not be appealing to you, but I do like that you can completely open it up and flip it around when you write in it. And they are really thin 
so that you can either keep a bunch of them or you can uncoil them later. It's kind of up to you and your style. You may get sick of having to store a bunch of these, but it's kind of nice that you don't have to carry a million pounds of planners around. You just have the one month at a time. So what do you think? Is this something that you would be into using? I have gotten so used to my bullet journal system and how I do an overview of things that I would borrow some of the things in here and put it in my bullet journal or put it into my disc bound. I, I would want more of that control over my designs and how that looks in here. So what do you think? Is this something that you would sign up for? Are these things that would help you at least get started and then you kind of jump off on your own? Let me know down below or if you have any other questions, let me know. But I, otherwise, I think it's a cute start if that is what you're looking for. If you like this video or have questions about other things to review, let me know. Like, share, subscribe, but otherwise I just hope that you enjoy. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.